Throughout this lecture, we will explore the fundamental components of the CSF core, its structure, and how it can help organizations in improving their cybersecurity posture. Now, the CSF core is divided into six functions that represent the highest level of organization within the framework. Each function is further divided into 22 categories, which are groups of cybersecurity outcomes closely related to each other. The categories are then divided into 106 subcategories, providing specific outcomes of technical and management activities. Now, let's make sense of how the CSF core is organized in a straightforward way. The CSF core has a specific setup that helps us manage cybersecurity effectively. The setup is divided into three main parts, functions, categories, and subcategories. At the top level, we have six main areas called functions. These functions are the uh, broad actions we take to manage cybersecurity, such as identifying what needs protection and responding if there is a security issue. Within each of these six functions, there are categories. Categories group together similar kinds of outcomes that support the overall objectives of its associated function. For example, in the protect function, there is a category focused on controlling who has access to our systems. Then to get even more specific, each category is broken down into subcategories. Now subcategories tell us exactly what outcomes we should aim for. So it's basically like having a detailed checklist under each category to make sure we cover everything important and don't overlook something that should be covered and put into consideration. Now, to make everything a bit clearer to you, let's start at the very top. The six functions of the CSF are govern, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Each function has a unique identifier consisting of two letters. Now, it's very important to understand that the functions, categories, and subcategories only describe desirable cybersecurity outcomes. They do not represent a set of actions or controls. Now, let's explore the six functions in brief detail. The govern function involves setting up the rules and policies for cybersecurity. So, it's about deciding how we manage cybersecurity risks and making sure everyone understands their role in keeping our information safe. In the identify function, we focus on understanding on what needs to be protected. This means identifying all the information, systems, and assets that are important and could be targeted by cyber threats. Now, after we know what needs safeguarding, the protect function helps us put in place the necessary measures to secure our information and systems. This includes things like using strong passwords, updating software, and ensuring only the right people have access to important information. The detect function is then about being alert and recognizing when something might be wrong. Detecting involves monitoring our systems for any signs of a cybersecurity event or breach, so we can catch issues as soon as possible. Now, when a cybersecurity issue is detected, respond is the step where we take action. This includes having a plan in place to address and manage the issue, minimizing any impact, and ensuring that the problem is resolved quickly. So the recover function then focuses on getting back to normal operations after a cybersecurity incident has occurred. So it's about restoring any affected services or systems and learning from the incident to improve our cybersecurity resilience. So as you can see, each function describes an outcome. The core is often symbolized as a wheel because all of its functions relate to each other. The govern function is usually placed right in the center as it directs and controls all other functions at the same time. The six functions are supported by 22 categories, as shown in this table. Categories have a unique identifier that contains the ID of their respective function. For example, the very first category of the govern function has the identifier gv.oc, with gv being the ID of the governance function. Now, you are probably wondering how do the outcomes of functions, categories, 
and subcategories relate to each other. Let's look at the identify function and the asset management category to get a better understanding. So at the very top, we have the identify function. The desired outcome of this function is that the organization's current cybersecurity risks are understood. Beneath, we have three categories. One of them is asset management, abbreviated as ID.am, which is the identifier of this category. Here, the desired outcome is described as assets that enable the organization to achieve business purposes are identified and managed, consistent with their relative importance to the overall organizational objectives. Now, this should make sense because in order to understand your risk exposure, you need to have an overview of your assets, such as hardware, software, systems, facilities, services, and even people. Without that information, it's almost impossible to identify and assess risks. Okay, but now how do we get an overview of our assets? Subcategories now further divide each category into more specific outcomes of technical and management activities. Now, these are the subcategories of the asset management category. In this case, it's eight subcategories, with each of them having a unique identifier as well. And it's basically the ID of the category, just with an additional number. So let's have a look at the outcomes of the subcategories. So for example, a couple of subcategories about, are about having an inventory of hardware, an inventory of software, an inventory of services, some sort of prioritization, some sort of classification. So we have different aspects that are probably not bad to have if you want to have an asset inventory that is then helping you to better understand um, with which threats and risks your organization probably has to deal. So I think we can agree on the fact that these outcomes support the overall outcome of the asset management category which in return, of course, supports the overall high-level outcome of understanding an organization's current cybersecurity risks. And this is how functions, categories, and subcategories relate to each other. All right, so what else is there to say about the core? Many beginners make the mistake of trying to address the functions sequentially. Don't do that. It's a lot better to address them concurrently. In the next lecture, we are going to delve deeper into each of the functions and learn how they can help organizations to improve their cybersecurity posture.